Hello, people. Uh, back again with a little section on population growth, I guess, for my little amphibians here. Uh, last video, I left you with being able to have the population of the frogs grow while the player is away. So, like, we start out without frogs. We move the player in after, I think it's now six seconds per spawn in frog. And there will only be one. And every six seconds that we're away, another frog will be waiting to spawn when we re-enter. So, guessing this might now be about 12 seconds of working. Let's see. Oh! It was like three times six seconds of lurking, because there's three flocks here. Now, this is obviously not heavily optimized, because... Oh, can I please get my interface back? Thank you. Because when you leave right now, the frogs just stay. And we shouldn't really do that. Now, there are a few solutions. One is to actually build in a pooling solution. But it occurred to me that what we're doing right now is actually a pooling solution already. Or is it? Let me think. Hmm, not really. But since we're uh, having frogs spawn and stay there, even though they're activated, I should obviously deactivate them. And having never more than 10 frogs there. And growing the pool. You know what? I'm gonna do like frog spawns per minute. Let's, let's spawn one per second and see what happens. Am I doing something wrong? Why is my population not increasing with spawns per minute of 60? I must be doing something wrong in my code. Yeah. Yeah, my code is wrong. Sorry. I knew it. I knew this here probably doesn't work. Let me see, the duration is in seconds. Spawns per minute is a float. Divided by 60 is like spawns per second. That's the frogs to add. As long as present frogs is smaller than much frogs count. And the frogs to... Uh, hmm, hmm, I don't see where this goes wrong, really. Maybe this isn't correct. Hmm, that should be correct, so because we're calling this here. Huh, hmm, okay. Let's do like uh, 2,000 spawns per minute and see what happens. That's nice. Starting a new video with finding a bug. Oh well. So, there should be many, many, many frogs now. There are. Cool. But it's not more than 10, I guess. It's a bit sad that Unity doesn't count how many objects you have selected anyway. Uh, we leave again. Now I think we have a problem, because if we reappear again... Ah, I know what's happening. All those frogs that have disappeared have not yet been disabled. Uh, sorry, destroyed. In the past incarnation, the frog simply got destroyed when you left the area. We can maybe do that. Just waiting for that car to drive by. I don't know if uh, the volume is a bit loud on my game. Uh, 
Um, hmm, how shall we do this? I mean, I know the difficult solutions. Uh, that's just a pool, like a building in a pooling solution, which obviously with frogs spawning and a pool is something you, in fact, really need to do. But I'm looking for simple, quick solutions, really, because it's not that important a uh, thing here with just 10 frogs. Let me just turn the thing off. Problem is that when frogs deactivate themselves, they the uh, present frog count doesn't go down, which is a good thing because the, the frogs don't get destroyed. What I could do is build in something here. The start reappearing function is let's let's rename this to player is uh, trigger is leaving. Player is leaving. Let's call it this. This is more obvious for what it's gonna do. What we can do here is destroy all the frogs that have uh, jumped into the pool and deactivated themselves. Do I keep track of the frogs? No, I don't. Yes, I do. There you go. We can go through that hash set. So, in a four. For each R F in frogs, if F dots game object dot is active uh, active self active self right active self uh, equals false, then we need to destroy try that game object. Uh, we need more to happen. We need to remove it from frogs. But we're actually not going to do that here. Because then we're messing with the iterator here. We're calling destroy on the game object. And what we're going to do is let me check where's my frog yeah what we're gonna do is fill that in in the destroy here this destroys the splash which is good but also it should call on the manager if it can find one if manager uh, then I'm not doing this. It's too spaghetti for me. I want to do it in here. But since I'm not sure if it's if this is a good thing. I don't think it is. Because you're removing something from the iterator here. So what you need to do is uh, remove all equals new hash set hash set o jumping jumping frog what you're gonna do is to Use a second hash set here. Add the to be removed frogs to that. And after that, for each frog f in removals, remove that frog from the original hash set, which should be good frogs dot remove f. Like so. Mm -hmm. 
Now, in the destroy on the game objects and in the jumping frog, the splash will be removed, which is a good thing. The player is leaving. Uh, we remove them. What we can do, uh, and I'm not absolutely sure. Well, I'm, I, I've done this before. This should actually work. I think destroy a game object is uh, called like one frame later. So this should work. The uh, frogs are not actually destroyed at this point here. So I should be able to uh, use their reference to remove them from the original frogs array. And what I obviously need to do is to lower the present frog count. So present oh, present frogs is like a minus no is like math dot max between zero and ooh, that's a beautiful word math between zero and present frogs minus removals dot count right so now when the player is leaving the disappeared frogs will uh, remove themselves which is good uh, and the present frogs counter will go down with every destruction of a frog as long as we make sure to remove only kill really kill off the frogs in the frogs manager uh, so kill the game objects and running the destroy functionality on it this should all work we should never now uh, decide to kill the frog from within another script so maybe no this should this should work let's see nothing there let's pick up our play why can't we pick up our player what's this okay sorry i don't know what happened there uh we move in and there should be a few frogs spawning now well oh, all right we're at very many frogs per second now hmm i don't think it actually works oh i know what happens i'm so sorry give me back my uh interface please the trigger here calls on the wrong function still or on a non-existing function this was changed into player is leaving now it should work so millions of frogs and player left oh none of them jumped so they all stick around this is a good thing uh, so player moves closer few of them jump and the player moves away and a few frogs stay behind and all the splash effects because they were generated by frogs jumping into the water and in that way uh, being the ones that were killed when the player leaves or killed removed hmm interesting interesting and then when we return there are 10 frogs again they're spawning and splashing and if all goes good only three will be left when we leave again four i thought i saw three how are you? Go away. Of course, I know I have update, updates. Okay, now no frog should be left. That's good. Some jump. And the problem here is uh, my thing keeps scrolling. Hmm. It seems to me that there's one extra frog left every time I leave. Is that right? So this is tree. Oh, this leaf didn't register. Oh, that's because the frogs were still jumping and not yet destroyed. But I'm quite certain 
that count never adds up to more than 10. Okay, I'm gonna do it like uh, this. I'm assuming an extra frog will spawn. Hmm. Like so. So there's two frogs, three frogs still active here. I'm not sure if they simply haven't. Let me check. Are they. I don't think they're jumping. Oh, one of them seems to be jumping. Yeah. Nevertheless, I'm going to remove this and step through and then have my three frogs left here, which is a good thing. Even though one of them is jumping into the water and not getting destroyed. Because the player is has already left. <clears throat> this is not too much of a problem, I think. So sometimes there will be one frog too little, too few, if you return, because it was actually destroyed. One or two frogs, actually jumping at the exact moment that you left, which will make it so that it doesn't get destroyed when you leave. I don't think that's a problem, right? Now, another thing occurred to me, <clears throat> is that I've been using uh, this value here. I don't think we need this value. Now, come to think of, I'm already running a counter within the hash set here. So let's see. While look, spawn single frog will increase the hash set number, right? Spawn single frog. Yes, yes, it will uh, over here. We will make these checks just simply with the count of um, the hash. This should be good. Yes. While frogs dot count is smaller than. Max frogs count over there. Mm -hmm. If frogs dot count is bigger or equal than max frogs count, then we don't spawn any frog. This can leave, uh, go since we're clearing the hash set here. The count is already at zero. And this, when the player is leaving, we're destroying and removing here uh, stuff from the hash set, so we can simply remove this. And this should still work. Okay, let's check the time on my video here. It's a bit of a short one right now. Uh, if this all works, I don't have too, <laughs> too much to do still in this video. I don't know if I should keep it as short as 20 minutes. Just double checking that everything works. We're at uh, millions of frogs per second now which is fine for testing purposes, I guess. Again, no frogs at start. Player enters, millions of frogs. Player leaves, player enters again. Millions of frogs say, jump this time. Player leaves, new frog spawn, but the old frogs stay. Player leaves, new frog spawn, old frogs stay. Player leaves, player enters. I think this is more or less the behavior that I had in mind. Except obviously for there are now spawning way too many frogs in way too short a time. Like let's do 10 frogs per minute again. And let's, to finish this off, include functionality that makes the frogs what I could do to save on resource, resources, 
let's just start typing and see what happens is to when we leave after we have we have checked if frogs uh, have already jumped and then removing them from the pool we because by now this is turning out to actually be kind of like a pool except that we actually destroy objects oh it's a semi pool which is good because it's actually a ditch let's call this a ditch after we've removed the frogs that have jumped let's disable all the frogs that are left because the player is away so for each var f in the frogs that are left frogs dot game objects dot set active uh, to missing a period why does this not work oh sorry this obviously should be an f mm -hmm. so we're setting them to full sorry we're disabling the frogs that are left after the player uh, leaves then when the player re-enters and that's in this function let's call this player re-enters oh uh, let's do that like so player re-enters player enters I'm not agreeing with my function names here because I assume I could also use this manager for other stuff which doesn't evolve the player. Yeah, let's just keep it at this and assume that this is a frog specific script. Okay. Here is what, where the spawning is happening, but before the spawning happens, we want to re-enable all the frogs that have been disabled when we left. So for each far f in frogs, we simply go f dot game object dot set active true, right? Now I wonder what happens if I think we won't call a reset here. As far as I can tell, nothing special happens on the enabling of a frog. We can call a reset to reset it back to where it uh, so that it sits in the place uh, where it should be and is not jumping. But actually, I think it might be nice that when a player enters uh let's say leaves while a frog is jumping and then enters again that the frog continues its jump instead of being reset so this should work i'm gonna keep the uh hierarchy open here because there's interesting stuff happening now yes Not even one frog because I didn't wait six seconds. Hmm. Hmm. Six seconds waited. Lee. Nothing spawns. Oh, right. Because I'm an idiot. Two things. I uh, renamed the function here. This is now player is entering. This here. Let's do like. Uh, 3 million again, not 3,000, but so 10 frogs. Some of them jump and I leave and they all get disabled. Some of them, though, will be like in uh, mid jump, maybe. Let's see if that's true. Oh, seems all of them were in mid-jump. Cool. 
Or were those all the, the new ones? As you can see, frogs that are there, that don't see me and haven't jumped yet, just gets turned off and on again. Some will start jumping now. I heard one. One will be mid-jump when I return. And it seems he is. And if I try and remove them all by my presence, and then leave, they all get destroyed here. As do the splashes, yes. So, these will all be new frogs. Is that true? Because it looks like as if... Let me check, let me check. It looks a little as if... The... Uh, as if the paths of all the different frogs are the same, even when they've all jumped and destroyed themselves. But that might just be... No, this is just, uh, that's just something that seemed that way. So, I guess that's it. Cool. Not too difficult. Not too many problems. It's a bit... Hmm. I, I, I made it a bit too easy on myself, perhaps. I didn't put in many uh, sanity checks. I should actually be building a better pooling solution for what happens here. Um, but I think I covered all the uh, cases where this could go wrong. And if there's bugs, we'll encounter them another time. So that's it for now. Um, I hope this was useful. Thank you for watching. And again, let me know if you have suggestions on how these videos go, or what to do with these frogs, or whatever. I'm uh, open for any feedback, really. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong axis. And... Yeah. Yeah, see you next time again. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.